Good afternoon, morning, or evening, depending on where you all are. Um, I am being led by the Lord to get on here today. Um, just to tell you a little bit, I don't know if you're new to the channel. If you are, welcome. This is the Lord's channel. Everything that is happening on here is all His doing, not my own. Uh, God is amazing, right? We serve a good, good father in heaven and there is nothing that is outside of the scope of what he can do i hope that's a word for somebody today there is nothing outside of the scope of what the one true living god jesus christ can do um so that being said i want to talk to you all today about what it means to uh lean not on your own understanding which the bible tells us not to do don't lean on your own understanding don't lean on trust on uh depend on rely on what you can see in front of you that's not how we walk this thing out the 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 just right those of us who are justified before the father in heaven those of us who are justified uh before god by confessing with our mouth that jesus is lord and that God raised him from the dead. The just shall walk by faith. Faith is the is the substance of the evidence of things not seen, the substance of things hoped for. So faith is trusting in what you can't see in front of you. Faith is 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 trusting on what's not visibly there. It's not in your account. It's not on your credit report. Um, you, you know, logic tells you, you wouldn't be able to get a loan if you tried, but God, God can do anything if it's in his will. We want to be walking in the father's will. Anything that's less than walking in the father's will is fruitlessness, right? It's just us, you know, uh, guiding us, us directing us, us leading us. We don't want to guide, direct, or lead ourselves. We want to be led by our father in heaven we want to be led by his spirit the holy spirit not our flesh our flesh gets us into trouble when we are led by our flesh we make mistakes when we are led by our flesh we get into situations and scenarios and circumstances that god never really wanted for you but he knew that you were going to buck up against his authority he knew you were going to be rebellious he knew you were going to go your own way and so he is a great shepherd and he always has a way of leading us back exactly to where he wants us to be you kind of got off track you went right when i wanted you to go left but that's okay i will get you back to where you need to be god is telling you that today i will get you back to where you need to be but you need to be walking in his will the bible says if we acknowledge him in all of our ways that he will direct our path he will he will his spirit will direct our path we don't direct our path hallelujah and so i i have been living in uh, a hotel now and i've uh, moved back and forth between i think about three hotels total um this is what it means to walk by faith and not by sight. This is what it means to lean not on your own understanding. The Bible says when we acknowledge him in all our ways, he will direct our path. So I am acknowledging him in all of my ways by doing exactly what he says, whether it makes sense to me or not. Whether I have to step out in faith and, and jump out you know, literally be dragged out of my comfort zone and just jump out and do something at his command. But the Lord will test us and he will try us, you know, because there's a lot of people out there right now. I want to hear from God. They say, I want to hear his voice. Why are you hearing from him? And I don't get to hear from him. No, no, no. You can hear from him. The Lord wants to speak to you. But are you, and, and, and this is a question that I really want you to ask yourself, are you willing to obey his instruction when he does? Because God is not just speaking for the sake of speaking to you so that you can hear your voice and go impress all your friends. God is speaking to you because he wants to give you clear guidance. He wants to give you clear instruction. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is a helper. The Holy Spirit is a counselor. When have you ever gone to a counselor who sits across from you and 
takes notes at the desk that didn't give you some kind of instruction, some kind of guidance, some kind of counsel. The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, is a mighty counselor. He wants to counsel you in every area of your life, but are you willing to relinquish control? And when I say that, I'm talking about the control that you think you have, but you don't really have. See, we think we have control, but God is in control. God is on the throne. So even the mistakes that you make, if if you walked into that mistake, it's because he willed it so. There's something that he wants you to learn. There's something that he wants to teach you. Maybe there's something that needs to be plucked up and uprooted out of your mind, out of your mentality, out of your beliefs, out of the way you carry yourself. And your heart posture needs to be corrected in some areas. And so, yes, he will allow us to go through some things. So I, I, I know this word is for somebody today. And I just thank the Lord for his words of wisdom and his words of knowledge and his words of encouragement. Right. Because I am I am no one to encourage anyone. OK, before I got saved, the, the, the best that I could do for you is, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, man, that sucks. That's about all that I could do. So when you when you hear that encouragement when you when you hear that word that is meant for you today it's not coming from Angela it's not not coming from any worldly wisdom or intellect that I possess okay it is coming from the spirit of all wisdom knowledge and understanding the spirit of God hallelujah hallelujah and so I just want to talk to you all today to let you know this walk is not easy okay the Bible says that the narrow path is the one few find so we know that the majority majority of humanity the majority of society the majority un of of the culture um, of culture is under the sway of the wicked one is under the sway of the devil is under the sway of Satan they're under his influence okay he has temporary dominion on the earth now before you go getting upset about that statement the Bible is clear that Satan is the lowercase g and I'm gonna say that because that's how I feel he is the lowercase g God of this world okay but there is a one true living God who walked among us and he's the only God who died and didn't stay in the ground. He got up out of that tomb three days later. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he is pleading our case right now. All the saints out there, my brothers and sisters in Christ, who have truly been born again. He is pleading for you. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Have mercy on them. Just like he was pleading for you. Just like he was pleading for the world for mercy from the father in who hallelujah and so yes this is what it means we're on the narrow path and when we're on the narrow path if you find this road is difficult the road to hell is broad it's wide there's a lot of people on it and it's a lot easier than relinquishing the control that you thought you had and giving it all to Jesus I give it all to you Lord I give you my hands and feet I give you my mouth make me a mouthpiece on the earth Lord move me aside I must decrease for my, my father in heaven and to increase in me I must decrease for the spirit of God to increase in me and you know what it's all about saving souls so I'm not in a hotel because I'm choosing to be in a hotel I'm not in a hotel because I'm on some sort of vacation I'm not in a hotel by my choosing I'm here because I am trying to walk in the will of the Lord is it easy no sometimes he feeds me by the day sometimes he takes care of me by the day Sometimes I am waiting for something to come through and the Lord will wait till the last minute just to sit back and say, oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? I knew what I was going to do. I already had the solution to your problem. I have the solution to every problem you will ever face. He knows the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. It's already written in his book. There is nothing that is a surprise to God that's happening to you right now. He knows your struggle. He knows your pain, but God is not interested in our comfort. He's not interested in our comfortability. He is interested in our growth. He is interested in our fruit. He wants to draw something out of you. He wants to produce something out of you. He wants to pull something out of you and bring forth something out of you that you didn't even know that you possess, that you didn't even know you had in you. But God is going to show you who he created you to be and who you truly are, not who the world says you are, your parents 
parents said you are, your caretakers uh, said you are, your guidance counselors and your teachers said you are. No, the Lord wants you to know who you are and who you can be in him. I do need to emphasize that is in him. Apart from him, we can do nothing at all. Apart from him, we have zero strength. Apart from him, we have zero power. I do need to emphasize that we cannot produce any fruit at all, okay? Any good fruit, any good works that they we're able to do on the earth is because we are being enabled, empowered, and equipped to do those good works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the gift that he has given us, the free gift of salvation. It is a gift, a gift from God. He even gave us the faith to believe in him. And that is a gift from God, lest any man can boast. Hallelujah. We are saved by God's grace. We don't deserve it. We didn't earn it. I wasn't out there, you know, living a life that was pleasing to God when he found me. He says, come as you are. He says, come as you are. You don't need to wash your hands before you get in the presence of the Lord. You don't need to pray five times a day for, to, to be in right standing with God or, or have his approval. Jesus is all the approval that you will need. Put your faith and trust in him. Make him Lord of your life. What does it even mean to make him Lord? It means that he governs your life. He directs your life. Hallelujah. Your father in heaven. He governs your life. He directs your life. He directs your path. Not you. When you make him Lord, what you are saying is my life is not my own. I was bought at a price. Hallelujah. Your blood purchased my life. The blood that Jesus Christ purchased, poured out on the cross, purchased my life. I am not my own. I am a sojourner on the earth. That on the earth, I died to my old self. I died to my old carnal nature. I continue to die to it more and more and more every day. Glory to glory to glory, not by any might or power or strength that I possess, but by the spirit of the living God that now dwells and abides in me. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. And so I'm coming on here because the Lord wants me to testify. That this is, this is what it means to walk by faith and not by sight. This is what it means to lean not on your own understanding. I'm not preaching a prosperity gospel. God is not, you know, when I ask him to pour out of his abundant storehouses, I'm talking about take care of me, Lord. Provide for my every need, Lord. Make it so that I can get to my doctor's office appointments and pay for the Uber and the Lyft to get there. Make it so that, you know, I, unless I'm, I'm supposed to be fasting, Provide every plate of food that I am going to need. Sustain me, Lord, even when there's scarcity. Whether I abase or whether I abound, I praise his holy name. All I ask him for right now, all I'm asking him for is a roof and food. I'm not entitled to anything. Okay, I'm not on here preaching the gospel. I'm not on here sharing the good news. I'm not on here sharing the deliverances. And can I just tell you, I'm meeting with, on average, two people a day. And they are getting delivered and healed and set free in the mighty and matchless name above any other name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, families are being reconciled. Families that were broken. Families where there was strife and contention and division are coming together. Hallelujah. Because people are getting delivered. We're always praying for somebody else. Lord, heal them. Lord, fix their heart. Lord, do something about their attitude. How about he heals you? How about he fixes your heart? How about he does something about your attitude? And then when you get in their presence, they'll only, they, they can't help but to be drawn to the light hallelujah because we're supposed to be whew, we are supposed to be a city on a hill we are supposed to be a blazing torch for the kingdom of heaven on the earth the kingdom of heaven lives in you you bring the kingdom of heaven to the earth every day when you walk around as a child of god you are that light the darkness is all pervasive it is getting worse and worse and worse out here, the darkness. Hallelujah. But he pulls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And he's doing it right now. 
and I'm watching it happen. And people are getting healed from sicknesses and pestilence and disease that was spoken over them by a worldly diagnosis. And they're coming out of agreement with that diagnosis and the symptoms are going away in Jesus name. In the name above any other name, they're getting delivered. They're getting delivered of anxiety. They're getting delivered of depression. God is taking away the shame of their youth, shame from things that they don't even, they haven't even spoken to people about until now. The joy of the Lord that is our strength is becoming their strength. And he's going to mark them all for glory and he's going to use them all mightily. So this is what it means to lean not on your own understanding. I don't have to understand what God is doing. I didn't have to understand what God was doing when he told me, leave your church for now, for a season. Stop doing everything that you're doing. Stop going to the prayer meetings on Friday. Pull out of your discipleship class on Thursday. Stop going to the Bible studies on Wednesday. Stop going to the church. Stop going to evangelize with your church and seek my face he was calling me into a merry season lay at my feet Angela let me pour into you press in like you've never pressed in before seek me with your whole heart give me all of you and he did it so that I could do this deliverance discipleship ministry teaching people the Bible the true gospel the true gospel has power the true gospel has transformational power the true gospel changes people religion legalism doesn't change anybody that's why you can go to church for 30 years you can know the bible inside and out you can have all the knowledge of scripture that you want but if you don't know the author of the scripture if he is not the lover of your soul, if you don't have an intimate and personal relationship with Jesus Christ, knowing the Bible does you no good. And when you read it, because it's spiritually discerned, you're not even reading it in the way that he would normally be able to speak to you. Because you're so worried about context, right? Yes, context is important, but sometimes the Lord will speak to you and it will have nothing to do with context. He will just use his word because <laughs> Jesus is the word made flesh. God will use his word to speak to you. Hallelujah. And by God, I'm talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You can't separate them. I know some people get upset when I say the word Trinity because Trinity is not in the Bible. That's all fine and good. I'm talking about the Godhead. A triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They were all there at the beginning of creation. That is biblical. In the beginning was the Word. Jesus is the Word made flesh, so He was there in the beginning. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Jesus is God. And the Word was with God. Who was Jesus with? Jesus was with the Father. The Father is Spirit. Jesus is God in the flesh. The Father is spirit. Jesus is God in the flesh. Jesus was the only acceptable sacrifice. Why? Because he was God in flesh who dwelt among us. He was the only one capable of living a sinless, blameless, stainless, perfect life. If you haven't latched on to the free gift of salvation today and you still have breath in your lungs i encourage you to say these words with me lord i am a sinner lord i've messed up i've made some mistakes i have rebelled against the holy god forgive me i believe that you are the son of God, Jesus, God manifested in flesh. I believe you walked among us. I believe you sacrificed your life on the cross, died on that cross, and three days later rose from the dead. And I want to rise to new life. I give you mine. I confess you with my mouth as Lord. 
Teach me your ways. Show me how to walk like you walked. And use me, Lord. If you're bold enough to say that prayer, it will be the best decision you ever made. But before you go and say, when you're testifying that you came to Christ, just know that the Father is the one drawing you even now. The Father is the one who draws us. And then he gives us ears to hear. My sheep know my voice, God says, and the strangers, they will not follow. If you're not hearing God's voice and you want to hear God's voice, clear out the distractions in your life. Start to consecrate your vessel. Pray. Talk to him. Thank him for everything. Acknowledge him in all of your ways. Drop whatever he tells you to drop. Jobs relationships if he tells you to relocate relocate because i promise you this if you want to hear voice god's voice you can but you want to be willing to obey when he speaks this is crucial this is what it means brothers sisters family to walk by faith and not by sight god bless you all I love you all. If I haven't answered your prayer requests, I will try my very best. The Lord is calling me to rest today. The Lord has commanded that I rest. Not only did he say it to me personally, but then it came through a confirmation in a brother that I spoke to yesterday. So I'm not ignoring you on purpose. I love you all, but I do need to rest because the fact of the matter is, apart from Jesus, I am nothing and I can do nothing. 